When I was a teenager, I lived next door to a kid who owned an Xbox. This kid would often come over to my house and play games on my PlayStation 2. One day this kid asked if I would be interested in trading consoles for the weekend, his Xbox for my PlayStation. I never had the chance to play on an Xbox, so I figured, yeah, sure, why not? He brought his Xbox over to my house along with three games, Fable, Deus Ex Invisible War, and The Elder Scrolls III Morrowind. To say I enjoyed Morrowind at the time is a complete understatement. I stayed up all night and day fueled by Dr. Pepper and potato chips to play as much as I could. However, good times must come to an end, and before I realized it, the weekend was over and so was my time with the Xbox and Morrowind. But there was hope. It was on one of our family trips to the mall that I stopped at an electronics boutique, mostly to window shop because honestly buying a video game brand new was something that would only ever happen on my birthday, and even then if I was lucky. But there on the shelf it stood, like a message from the video game god himself, Todd Howard. The PC Game of the Year edition of The Elder Scrolls III Morrowind. I reached towards it, slowly, carefully. I didn't want to spook it. But then it hit me, like a brick to the face. Wham! The $60 price tag. And that was it. Game over. But no, no it wasn't. Not this time. I just had to have it. And thus began my weeks of hard labor. I mowed lawns for the people in the neighborhood, pulled weeds from their garden, watered their lawns, and many, many other odd jobs. But before long, I had saved up $50, which I had tucked away in a little hidey hole in my bedroom. And when I had finally made my last $10, I walked into my bedroom, opened my little hidey hole, and a note, along with a brown paper bag, but no money. I reached in and read the note. I borrowed your money, I'll pay you back later. Here's some gummy bears as an apology. My older brother had taken my money, leaving me some gummy bears as thanks. I never did get that money back, and I never got my copy of Morrowind. However, thanks to GOG, I now own the Game of the Year edition of Morrowind, so that's good. Also, a fun fact. I haven't eaten gummy bears since 2002. Anyway, moving on. With both Arena and Daggerfall behind us, and Morrowind's time to shine, it begs the question, did Bethesda knock it out of the park again? Well, there's only one way to find out, and that's to dive headfirst into Bethesda's 2002 release of The Elder Scrolls III Morrowind. <laughs> Has it really been that long? Oh my god, far out. Uh, oh well. There'll be spoilers for the whole story of the game, so you've been warned, outsider. First, let me say that there is a lot to go over here. Unlike Daggerfall, the plot of the main story isn't so all over the place, but it is still slightly complex. There is a lot of lore, such as people, places, events, powers, and items to cover. I'll try my best to explain the story as best as I can, but I'll still be leaving things out just for the sake of storytelling and time. So with that aside, let's do this. We've been sent from a prison in the Imperial City to Morrowind. We don't know why, but the Emperor himself has granted us a full pardon. After a nightmare where the voice of the goddess Azura speaks to us, we awaken on a boat now ported in the town of Sedanin within Morrowind. We are escorted off the boat and taken to a building where the character creation begins. I named my character Lycan the Third an orc who is accused of stealing pillows and Cyrodiil and trying to sell them on the black market. Once finished and released from custody, we are given a task to travel to the city of Balmora and give a package to a man named Caius Custodes. 
After a very short tutorial, which gets us used to the controls and the interface of the game, we are pretty much free to do whatever we want. We can fight some mud crabs, rats, squibs, and even some slaughterfish. Or maybe do a few side quests here in Sedanin. But for right now, it's off to Balmora to visit Caius. After some traveling, side tracking, and a few pillar thefts here and there, we finally arrive in the city of Balmora. After some time, eventually I find my way to Caius, who turns out to be a skooma addicted spy master of the blades. Poor guy even sold his shirt for just a little taste of that sweet, sweet moon sugar. I kid, of course. Although, now that I think about it, <laughs> I might actually be right. It turns out that Caius is the spy master of the blades, an elite personal security created by the Emperor. We give him the package and promise to follow his orders as a fellow member of the Blades. Caius doesn't tell us what's in the package, but sends us off to gain information about the Sixth House Cult and the Nereverine Prophecy. Let's go over both really quick, shall we? The Sixth House Cult was once called House Dagoth, a great house in Morrowind led by a man named Vorin Dagoth. After a battle long ago, and some religious disagreements, the house was slaughtered and wiped from the history books. However, the house has been slowly gaining power and rebranding themselves as the Sixth House Cult, and worshipping somebody known as Dagoth Ur. The cult has also been responsible for some assassinations and the spread of a plague, among other evil deeds. Next is the Nereverine, a prophecy passed down from the goddess Azura, which the tribes of Ashlanders believe in. The prophecy is that one day Nerevar will be reborn and return to Morrowind and cast out the false gods called the Tribunal and other foreigners as well. Who is Nerevar? Nerevar was once a beloved great leader of Morrowind who centuries before united all the peoples within Morrowind. The tribes live in the wilds of Morrowind and also believe that the current rulers, the Tribunal, are false gods. I did of course skip a lot of lore here because honestly there's just so much of it. Eventually, after some questing, we build the trust of Caius and he gives us the package that we gave to him at the beginning of the game. Inside is a letter from the Emperor himself telling Caius that he believes us to be the Nereverine, and wants us to fulfill the prophecy. It is at this point we must seek out the Ashlander tribes around Morrowind, who believe in the prophecy, and ask them if we are indeed the Nereverine. And right now, we're not. But we could become the Nereverine if we pass the Seven Trials, which are, in short, Trial 1, be born on an unknown day to unknown parents, which we are. Trial 2, immunity from all disease. Trial 3 is, well, it's pretty much known as get the moon and star from Goddess Azura. After this trial, you will be the Nereverine, and the rest uh, just essentially be acknowledged as Nereverine by the peoples of Morrowind. Again, it's a little bit more complex than that, but you get the idea. Upon returning to Caius and telling him what we know, he sends us off to take the fight to the Sixth House cult by wiping out one of their bases. Their base is actually a really spooky place, I won't lie. I felt on edge. After battling our way through the caves, I met with an entity who I would barely call a man. His name is Dagoth Garis, and he's here to pass on a message from Dagoth Ur. The message is, and I quote, Once we were friends and brothers, Lord Nerevar, in peace and in war. Yet beneath Red Mountain you struck me down as I guarded the treasure you bound me by oath to defend. But remembering our old friendship, I would forgive you and raise you high into my service. Garis tells us that Dagoth Ur not only wants to meet us within Red Mountain, the volcano in the center of Morrowind, 
but he also believes us to be the reincarnation of Nerevar. After this, he attacks us and we're left with no choice but to kill him. Upon his death, he inflicts us with corporous disease. What is that, you may ask? Well, in short, it's a deadly disease spreading around Morrowind. It is what gives birth to some of the ghastly horrors roaming around Morrowind known as the Ash Creatures. Some of the people inflicted with the disease will mutate and change, becoming zombie-like monsters or ascending and turning into sleepers, which are eldritch-like horrors. We now have this disease, and we must find a cure. We must travel to and speak with Diveth Fur, a dark elf who has been researching the disease. Actually, before I move on, I gotta bring up something about Deveith. That guy is honestly really messed up. He created four daughters who are actually his wives and who are actually clones of himself, only female, and he... you know... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, have fun with that knowledge in your brain. Anyway, while he can rid us of the symptoms, he can't fully cure us. But, you know what? That's okay, because the side effect of corpus disease is to never age and be completely immune to all diseases. So, you know, that sounds pretty cool to me, I won't lie. Anyway, it's back to our good friend Caius. Because, it turns out, we are now, thanks to Corporus, closer to becoming the Nereverine. We must only get the special item known as Moon and Star from Azura. However, we must sadly say goodbye to our shirtless pal Caius. He's been given orders to return to the Imperial City, and he will forever at this point vanish from the game, and to my knowledge, the entire franchise as well. Goodbye to you, you skooma-loving, no-shirt-wearing wild child. We'll never forget you. <laughs> I love you, Caius. <laughs> never change. Never change, Caius. After that tearful farewell, it's off to get the moon and star from Azura, from a cave called the Cavern of the Incarnate. It's here we gain the moon and the star, but also speak with Azura and some ghosts of other incarnates, who were once other people who could have been the Nereverine, but failed. We are now finally Nereverine, and we must speak with Vivek, a godlike being from the Tribunal. Vivek informs us that we must stop Dagoth Ur and destroy something known as the Heart of Lorcan, from which he draws his power. But the only way to do it is with three powerful Dwemer artifacts, Wraithguard, Sunder, and Keening. Vivek himself grants us with Wraithguard, but the two others are kept by two of Dagoth Ur's followers on Red Mountain. So, it's off to Red Mountain for the final showdown. After we gain the other two artifacts, we confront Dagoth Ur. And actually, Rala quickly beat his butt. I was actually surprised how quickly he died, and I'm just kidding, because he faked this out. He's actually very much alive and very much immortal. I knew I had to make my way down and across the bridge to use the three artifacts to destroy the heart of Lorcan. With the three artifacts in hand, I destroyed that heart, and Dagoth Ur was rendered powerless. So, I killed him. Azora herself congratulated me on a job well done, and with that, the blight across Morrowind has stopped and the story ends. Red sky turns to blue sky. Happy ending. Now, I must confess, I'm aware that was probably a little confusing for people who don't know the story, and I think with good reason. Morrowind's story is at times tough to understand, especially for new players. There is a lot of lore, books, and people you must talk to in order to fully grasp the story. I could, indeed, break down the entire thing for everybody, but much like Daggerfall's story, if I did, 
this video would be hours long, but I would be happy to do it. Besides, even though I pretty much spoiled the entire story, I guess if you liked the way it sounded, you could go and play Morrowind for yourself and learn about that lore as you played. Either way, it wraps up the story for Morrowind, so it's onwards and upwards to gameplay. Hey, guess what? I'm going to talk about character creation first. See? I learned. Now if only I could learn to make better videos. <laughs> Sadly, I start this character creation with some heartbreaking news. The High Elf has lost his immunity to paralysis. I know, I know, it's a lot to take in. But this isn't the time for mourning, no. Remember the good times you might have had laughing in the face of every bloody spider. Remember those times and smile, because in our hearts and souls, that High Elf will forever be immune to paralysis. Forever shine on you, wild stallion. We love you. Now, with that out of the way, let's actually begin, shall we? We've got three choices when it comes to creating our character. We could take the test, like in Arena and Daggerfall, which would generate a class for us, pick from a pre-made list, or create our own class, which is pretty cool. After that, we have something new, birth signs. These are, very simply put, extra buffs we can pick. They're a fantastic addition to the series, but I do have only one teeny tiny little gripe, and that's you're forced to pick one. I would love it if there was one just called the Ugly Duck or something, which grants no special ability or buff, just to give those who don't want to pick something an option. But now it's on to leveling. Leveling in Morrowind is the same system first introduced in Daggerfall, essentially. You level by using a skill until that skill levels up. Once enough skills in the Major and Minor level up, you yourself level up, which can only be done by sleeping. When you sleep to level up, you'll be taken to the level up screen, where you get three points to put into any attribute. It's a little mathy, but... There's, there's, there's actually a whole bunch behind that, but just for the sake of the video, we'll skip it, okay? Those who have played Morrowind know what I'm talking about. Okay, let's move on to side questing in Morrowind. Arena and Daggerfall's questing system was pretty much just radiant questing. Quests that are infinite. Morrowind, however, actually has quests written by a person with a start, middle, and end. Once they're done, they're done. I personally really love these types of quests. I've never been a fan of radiant questing. It makes me feel like I'm just wasting my time, you know, doing nothing. I love meeting a person, getting to know them, and helping them out with a problem. Morrowind has no shortage of these. Some of these quests are really actually good, so let's talk about a few, shall we? There's one with a bandit named Nels, who politely rubs you, and depending on your response, will later become a trainer for you. You can even help him to meet his future wife. I, I assume they went on to get married and have kids who all politely rub people as one big happy family. <laughs> Think of the Brady Bunch, but just rubbing people. There's also the classic one of... Well, actually, I wouldn't call it much of a quest as much as just watching a mage fall out of the sky to his death. Pretty funny stuff. <laughs> I'm, ki I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You could also give a stolen ring to a wood elf named Fargoth and become his best friend in the whole wide world. Oh, and, and of course, who could forget stealing back Fargoth's ring and pretty much all of his life savings? Uh, what else? Oh, uh, solve a murder and get rewarded with our own home? I say home, but it still pretty much belongs to the murderer who we killed. He's just not using it anymore, and we need a safe place to keep all the pillows we've stolen. My character's choice profession, even now. There are many more quests, but you get the idea. The questing in Morrowind is fun, I can't lie. You can just stumble upon them while out adventuring, and that's natural and feels great. 
Arena and Daggerfall had quests, but like I said, it just it never felt like I was actually accomplishing anything. Morrowind feels different. These are real people with real problems. You can help them, hinder them, or ignore them. Heck, you might not even know some of these people had quests to begin with. To me, that adds to the replayability. Your choices can change the story. I believe this was a step in the right direction. Chances are if Morrowind had radiant questing, I just ignore it and I just feel unaccomplished. A well-written quest is a fantastic thing in my opinion. Sure, they are finite, but memory isn't. Let's talk about those guilds. Much like Daggerfall, Arena is just chock full of guilds. You've got, <laughs> here we go, the Fighters Guild, Mage Guild, Thieves Guild, Morag Tong, Imperial Cult, Tribunal Temple, and the Imperial Legion. And that's pretty nice, but Morrowind goes a step further with the Great Houses, of which there are three. House Redoran, House Halulu, and House Talvani. These houses, I guess, are kind of like the political parties of Morrowind. Each of these places has their own unique quest lines. You get to meet the leaders and the people within these places, learn more about the guild or the house you joined, and even see lots of the world while exploring these quests. I personally became a mage. Yes, I know, an orc mage. I know, I know, I know, I know. But I still rose through the ranks of the Mages Guild until I became the Arch Mage. I'll be using the Mages Guild as my examples for that reason. Oh, uh, I also joined and finished the Fighters Guild. Uh, the Thieves Guild, I, they wouldn't let me join because, well, I stole all the pillows from their bed. But nevertheless, we move on. Much like Daggerfall's guilds, the only way to advance is to become greater. For my example, a greater mage. The stronger you become with your magical abilities, and the more quests you do, will eventually lead you to a higher title within that guild. You'll slowly do missions for multiple people within the guilds all over Morrowind, gaining their favor and respect. Each person has their own unique motives, which you can learn more about if you press them on the subject. To me, this, once again, is another fantastic step from Daggerfall. Gone are the faceless NPCs, the same building, look, and layout. Bethesda, once again, did the right thing in my opinion. Another thing to mention is that each guild and house has their own sort of internal politics. For example, the Fighters Guild hates the Thieves Guild. And if you join the Fighters Guild and go far enough, you will be eventually unable to join the Thieves Guild. It's stuff like this that makes Morrowind not only replayable, but amazing to boot. I love this choice. Guilds somewhat force the player to embrace what you are. If you join the Mages Guild, you must level up magic-related skills, and thus be a proper mage, more or less. It embraces roleplay. It doesn't make sense to join another guild that hates the mages, and so you can't. Morrowind compared to Arena and Daggerfall has done guilds right. Up next, I want to just quickly talk about the music. Morrowind has a fantastic soundtrack. Short Yes, but fantastic all the same. You can hear some of it right now playing in the background. <laughs> there you go, there was some of it right now. I was quiet. I let you mellow and listen to the music for just two seconds. Anyway, on top of the soundtrack, the sound design works really, really well. Especially the Silt Strider. Ask any Morrowind fan what the Silt Strider sounds like if you want to hear them just do it naturally. <laughs> Here you go. I can't, I can't, I can't do, I can't do it. But there you go. Oh, 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 oh. That was the. I was trying to do the echo. <laughs> it was terrible. Oh, remind myself to cut this. I won't cut it. 
<laughs> I won't cut it. Look, I'm no expert on music or sound design. I just know what works and what doesn't. Morrowind's music works well. I feel like a lot of modern games don't really have that many standout soundtracks. A lot of it just sort of stays in the background, which is good, don't get me wrong, you really don't want to hear a terrible song just blaring in your ears repeatedly. Arena and Daggerfall had some really, really nice music, but I feel like Morrowind just takes the cake so far. Alright, <sighs> let me talk about the elephant in the room. His name is Stampy, and I won him from a radio contest. He's a good boy, and I love him a lot. Okay, I'm, look, I'm kidding. Let me be serious. Let's talk about the combat. <laughs> Let's talk about that combat. Arena, Daggerfall, and Morrowind all work on numbers rather than animation. So, sp <laughs> oh, vastly oversimplifying things here really quick. The computer does a few dice rolls, and if that swing on the dice roll says you hit the enemy, you'll hit the enemy. You might be swinging like a madman, and it might look like each swing is connecting, but if that dice roll says no, then no damage is dealt. The same is true of bows and arrows and magic. A lot of people really dislike Morrowind's combat, and I totally understand why. When I was younger, I wasn't a fan, but now as an adult, I feel entirely different. I know why it's done this way, and the reasons behind it, and I'm I'm fine with it. It's like I said about Daggerfall's dungeons. Sometimes you couldn't finish a quest because you didn't have the right skills or magic required to finish it. You had to prepare for anything. The combat in Morrowind is making you, the player, feel like you're untrained. Because you are. If you ran around only using, let's just, let's say a spear, then for some reason you lose that spear, and the only weapon at hand is a, a sword or a bow, well, of course you're not going to be good with either one, because they're completely different weapons. Now, from a gameplay standpoint, is this fun? No, not really. It can be frustrating to watch. In fact, here's a real Morrowind fight in full. Enjoy! Of course, it gets better as time goes on. Look, I'm not gonna lie, but we need to take another step back for a moment and ask ourselves, how could it be better? Well, just off the top of my head, I think two things could work instead. Choice one, give the player a choice to choose animation-based combat or numbers-based combat. Sure, I know that would be a nightmare to program and honestly, it would break the whole game, but Again, still, this is just off the top of my head. Uh, option two is blend the two together. Make it animation-based. Each hit will hit, but if your skill is low, then the weapon will do less damage. Your swings will take longer and use up more stamina. The more you improve, the better the action becomes. For example, uh, maybe your character holds a one-handed weapon with both hands at a low sword skill level. But, as time goes on, you become more confident, so to speak. They use the one-handed weapon correctly. Maybe you learn to block with the sword as well. Each swing will get quicker and, and critical hits will become more frequent and so on and so forth. Look, I know both choices aren't perfect. You'd need a complete reworking, but regardless, I think the combat could have been better, but I understand why it's the way it is. Now, let's talk about the world of Morrowind, shall we? When compared with Arena and Daggerfall, Morrowind's world is much, much smaller. That isn't a bad thing, however. You're now able to roam free, walk to each town, uh, or, or go coast to coast. There's something hiding around every little corner, ready to tell you, the player, 
a little story. The world is smaller, sure, but that doesn't mean it isn't filled with fun things. This world and the people in it have been refined. The starting town, for example, of Sedanin, it, it has a totally different feel and pace than, say, the city of Vivek or Balmora. The people in Sedanin live simple lives, in simple homes. Everybody knows everybody. Hi, Fargoth. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. They have one general store and also just a single bar. Balmora, on the other hand, is a much more modern place. It has plenty of places to shop, eat and drink. The crime is higher, the homes are bigger and better built. It, it houses guilds and temples, and the people there are far less caring. The world feels richer in storytelling because of this. Each person and place feels unique. From swamps to farmland, clear blue skies to sandstorms, you've got a lot to see. And I love it. I love this world. But how do you travel in this world? I mean, you've got two feet and a heartbeat, so you, you can get to very slowly running. Like, like really slowly running. You do get quicker as time goes on, but... Oh, mama, is it rough at first? Chances are you'll immediately uh, and very immersively fast travel via boat, teleporting, or silt strider. I do enjoy this method of fast travel, but as the hours started to rise, I, I did find myself just kind of wishing for a more convenient, uh, conventional fast travel system. You know what I mean? I don't mind traveling around via boat or silt strider, but there really were times when I wished, I don't know, selecting the boat on, 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 just as an example, I could just choose to go anywhere on the coast and not just, you know, travel to one place to travel to the next and, and so on and so forth to get to where I wanted to go. I know it's immersive, I, I just, and I like it, I just, I just wish there were more strider stops or boat stops to make travel just a little bit more convenient. Additionally, I don't like the city of Avec. I know a lot of people <laughs> I know a lot of people get used to it. Uh, sure, I didn't like it back then when I was a kid and I sure as shit don't like it now. I, I, I sorry, I just kind of wish that navigating it was a little bit more easy. I, I again, I know people get used to it, but that's just my two cents. <laughs> if you love Vivek, hey more power to you, my man. more power to you. Okay, look, um, so I, I think it's time to bring up another elephant in the room. That's right, there are two of these bad boys, and they're just stomping around, eating all my damn peanuts. Uh, seriously, my peanut bill is just out of control at this point. <laughs> okay, look, we got to talk about how godlike you can become in this game. When you first start Morrowind, you'll be weak, slow, and poor. But, as time goes on, you'll become stronger, faster, and richer. And that's what you want to see in a game. Growth. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Morrowind takes growth to a whole new level, thanks to the magic system, training system, alchemy, and honestly just the leveling system in general. Alright, let me quickly gloss over each of these things. Alright, first up is the magic. Once again, like Arena and Daggerfall, you can make your own spells, which is really great and a lot of fun to do. But if you know how to exploit it, you can create spells of a godlike tier. I personally don't do this, it doesn't make the game fun for me. The only downside to making your own spells is, is the cost. Of those spells. The better they are, the more they cost. Next, training. Morrowind has teachers who you can pay to help you gain uh, more levels in any skill. There isn't a limit. If you have the gold, they'll teach you all the way from level 1 to the max level of any skill. This system can be a boon, and hell, 
I used it all the time to help me uh, uh, to to advance, say in like um, uh, illusion or, or or destruction or whatever. Nothing is wrong with that. However, alchemy. If you want some extra, you know, just a, a little bit of extra gold in your pocket in Morrowind, that's no problem. Yeah, pick a few herbs and spices out in the wilderness, mix those bad boys together to create a potion of healing, and sell that bad boy to someone. Simple, easy, fun. Now, if you want all of the gold in Morrowind, take some of that gold you have, find somebody who sells those same herbs and spices, buy all the stock they have over and over and over again until you have no more gold, brew those items together, make a potion, uh, sell them to whoever, and just repeat. The problem, well, exploit, <laughs> it's an exploit more likely, is that the shopkeepers in Morrowind tend to have the same stock that never goes away. They always refill it. Not after a week, not after a day, not even after an in-game hour, but as soon as you close the shop. So you can buy all the same twigs and berries over and over and over until you run out of gold. You've got an unlimited supply of ingredients. The more you craft potions, the better you become. The better you become, the more those potions are worth. And pretty early on, in fact, a single potion is worth more than the two items used to make it, and that equals profit. After less than an in-game hour, you'll have more gold than you'll know what to do with, which means you can spend it on trainers to level up anything, or hell, even go and spend it on, uh, I don't know, like a spell that wipes out the entire city with a single fireball. Do you see the problem yet? Soon, all of these things combined essentially break the game. You'll be killing enemies with one hit. Hell, even Dagoth Ur, you'll be just wiping it. <laughs> you can't kill a god. <laughs> yes, you can. Very easily. <laughs> Very easily. I mean, for lack of a better word, you will be a god. <laughs> the true god. Sorry, I, I couldn't help it. Now, look, of course you don't have to exploit the game. You can ignore all of it and play it your way. It's your game, your experience, you have fun however you want to. Morrowind isn't an online game where you could just troll players. It's a single player game. Exploit it to your heart's content. Become as godlike as you want. Again, look, I personally don't, I don't really do these things, but I promise you will at some point, even if for no other reason than just to have somebody teach you how to run faster. <laughs> well, uh, you see there, uh, you put one foot in front of the other, and uh, you, you just keep you, you, you keep doing that. One foot, then the other, then again and again, and you just keep going faster and faster. At some point, uh, you'll be uh, what's called uh, running. Have fun. <laughs> Have, have fun with that. <laughs> Thanks for the gold. <laughs> oh, shit. Let me be real with you for a moment. I started this whole series of videos with a single goal in mind. Watching the progression of the Elder Scrolls series as a whole. And finally, making a video at the end of it all about where the series should go in the future. Not that Bethesda's ever gonna listen, but... It's mostly just just for me and for and for all of you to watch and say, well, yeah, I kind of agree or nah, 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 <laughs> get, nah, nah, get that shit out of here, <laughs> you know? Anyway, I never played Arena before, but I really ended up enjoying it. Daggerfall was my first Elder Scrolls experience, but in time, it just became a faded memory. After playing it again, I actually... I, I really enjoyed it, uh, m way more than I thought I would. It held up far better than I ever remembered. Morrowind... Uh, this game was... This was the first game in the series I truly have a solid memory of. It really is what kickstarted my love of the franchises, among with a lot of other people. 
like Daggerfall, I was I was worried about going back to this game. I didn't want to shit all over my memory of it. We've all been there, rewatching a movie from our childhood only to find out how terrible it was, and now that's our new memory of that thing. However, Morrowind still holds up, at least for me personally. As soon as I started the game and heard that music on the menu, watched that introduction video, and finally saw the inside of that very ship, the very beginning of the game, man, it was like stepping back in time for me. I'm not blinded by nostalgia. I, I can see the game hasn't aged that well, but, but, if you ignore those small problems that the game has and just let go, you'll find yourself being happy. And at the end of the day, isn't that what games are for? And speaking of being happy, uh, do you know anyone who might be interested in like a really, really comfy pillow? I uh, only had one owner, I swear. It's uh, basically brand new. Just if you know anybody, just uh, yeah, just just uh, leave a little comment down there in the, the little comment section. <laughs> just doing the just doing the YouTube thing. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I, I, I'll get back on track. The world inside this game. It feels real. Sure, I did a terrible job at explaining the story, but honestly, I think, and no, actually, I don't think, I believe you should go and enjoy this experience for yourself. Experience this game. Talk to those people, hear what they have to say, read the in-game books, and learn about all of that background lore. There is a lot there to unpack. Now, is this type of storytelling for everybody? No, I know it isn't. If you don't like reading anything longer than a tweet on Twitter, you might want to skip the game. This, it, it's not an action-packed game, it's far more down-to-earth, and the game runs on modern hardware and is very cheap on both GOG and Steam, especially if you wait for a sale. Hell, you can even mod this game and make it look beautiful and, and, and add a bunch of stuff in there, so that's there if you want it. I left out so much content in this game. So Morrowind is, without a doubt, worth both your time and your money. The game also comes with two expansion packs, just filled with content. I wasn't able to get around to the both of them, but if you're interested, I'm more than happy to take a look at them and make a video about it. I, I Seriously, just let me know if you want to see something like that. But listen, before I go, I have one more elephant in this room. Only this elephant has wings and is annoying and I hate it and it never leaves me alone and it gangs up on me and God, do I hate the cliff races. Seriously, I'm not joking. When I... <laughs> When I forgot all about them, and then when I heard the sound for the first time in the game, man, it was like having a NOM flashback. <laughs> it was terrible. Oh. Anyway, uh, I got that off my chest, so let's move on, shall we? Up next is Oblivion. I can see the intense bloom when I close my eyes at night, and I swear, when I'm alone, I can hear those gods. So let's close shut the marble jaws of oblivion together, shall we? All right. Oh, and uh, remember, if you feel like I've earned it, please feel free to like, dislike, or sub to the channel. The power is yours, but only if you feel like I've earned it. And if I'm not living up to your expectations of how I should be, you are more than welcome to, to dislike or just unsub. It's your choice, okay? It's your choice. But, I let you know, I'm getting... I just feel like I'm getting better and more comfortable with each new video released. And I always appreciate the support and advice. So, if you've made it this far, I want to say one thing. Thank you. Thank you so much for everything said on the Daggerfall video, to all of the new people joining this channel for taking a chance on me. 
I know I'm not perfect. I know these videos are rough. And so is, so is all of this. So is me reviewing a game. But I promise I'm getting better. And I thank you. I thank you from the bottom of my heart and my soul. Thank you for taking a chance on me. And hey, once I'm done with the Elder Scrolls, uh, drop a comment and let me know what kind of game or game franchise you might like to see me cover. Alright, look, listen, I'll shut up now, okay? I love you. Peace out, pals.